Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atten, and we got some very, very big thank you for some of you out there. Thank you to Jonathan Esavaria of Worcester, Massachusetts, for his WWE SmackDown Worcester Mass 11 by 17 poster purchase. To Ty Schaefer of North Aurora, Illinois, for picking up the Sasha Banks limited edition WrestleMania 35 autograph photo. To William Fent of Chandler, Illinois, for the autograph Superfly Jimmy Snuka WWE photo file photo. To Eli Rosado of Garneville, New York, for the Tony Atlas autographed Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant drawing print. To Blake Fobian of Los Cruces, New Mexico, for the Finn Balor Bulletproof WWE Shop t-shirt bundle. To Peter Dabrowski of Waterbury, Connecticut, for having Tony create an original 18x24 drawing for him. To George Farmer of Beckley, West Virginia, for purchasing the one-of-a-kind Macho Man Randy Savage 18x24-inch Tony Atlas drawing. To Ralph DeVito of West Long Branch, New Jersey, for the EO Shirai NXT In Your House autographed poster purchase. To George Tlatelpa of Brooklyn, New York, for the Jeff Hardy WrestleMania 35 autograph photo. To Brandon Amoyet of Joliet, Illinois, for the Bray Wyatt 18x14 autograph drawing. To Caitlin Heck of Didimer, Missouri, for the AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson autograph WrestleMania 36 8x10 photo. To, to Dwayne Hoffman of Piedmont, South Carolina, for both the Bray Wyatt Yowie Wowie WWE t-shirt bundle and the Edge WWE t-shirt bundle. To Mark Hester of Des Moines, Iowa for the Tony Atlas autographed Legion of Doom 18 by 17 inch drawing print. To Austin Brown of Lincoln, Illinois for the Johnny Gargano autographed 11 by 14 autograph poster. To Nasbia Miller of Sumter, South Carolina for the Jake the Snake Roberts WWE shop t-shirt bundle. To Todd Pate of Knoxville, Tennessee for the Lacey Evans autographed 11 by 14 inch poster. And to Charles Holt of Raleigh, North Carolina for the Undisputed Era autographed 11 by 14 poster. All of these great fans not only picked up awesome rare merchandise on our eBay store, but are directly helping keep wrestling legends like Tony Atlas, Marty Jannetty, and more working during the worst of times with such limited live events and autograph signings to participate in during coronavirus. Check out the link to our eBay store in the description box below. And again, thank you. Wrestling fans around the corner and around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. MJ in the house. Future WWE Hall of Famer, mind you. Let me tell you this. I'm not in there yet. No, not yet. Oh, okay. But you will be. Yeah, you know, I will. You know Sean wants to be the first three-timer. Three-timer, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it, let me tell you, you enjoy the in-studio shoot interviews four times a week. It isn't cheap to put these productions together, folks. We need your help. No, because you got to pay me. Okay. <laughs> Coronavirus has killed the nightlife in a lot of ways. We are night owls, Marty and I, but that's a different story for a different time. One way you can help is to check out the great merchandise we have in the Boston Wrestling eBay store. It is perfect for any wrestling man cave or any collection. That's right. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders in studio shoot interviews on eBay with this brand new personally autographed WWE Royal Rumble 2021 11 by 14 poster signed by WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, his advocate Paul Heyman and Kevin Owens. Reigns and Owens battled for the Universal title in a last standing match January 31st in the Thunderdome in Tampa. This limited edition collector's poster is number 31 of only 50 produced. Comes with WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Also comes with an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas in a bonus autographed 8x10 photo. Get this rare, awesome collectible for your man cave and help keep wrestling legends working now. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year of unknown with professional wrestling content galore and we need you to join our family every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after we review the previous night's Monday Night Raw. It's Wrestling Insiders at your house with the unpredictable WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights after WWE, NXT, and AEW at 10 p.m., you never know who's going to show up on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and 
and rock and roll journey through the 80s and 90s on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday nights after the lights go down at the Thunderdome on SmackDown, it's John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. If you want early, ad-free access to all of our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot-interview DVD library, and to help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, it's that time again. It is Tuesday night. I'm Dan Marotti here at MWF Studios in downtown Melrose, Massachusetts. The zip code of champion 02176. Before we get into this week's brand new Wrestling Inside is at your house with WWE Hall of Famer. Let's get a little business out of the way. If you enjoyed tonight's show, simply give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel for over two thousand free videos clicking on the little notification bell allows you to get updates when new content drops and we have new video content seven days per week folks in what's becoming more important than ever please please share 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 the links to our talk show videos like this especially uh, there are millions of fans out there especially those uh, that love the 80s and 90s that left sports entertainment as we know it today behind uh, they have no idea we exist but will love us once they find us share the link on facebook share it on twitter share it on reddit share it on facebook wrestling groups and wrestling websites share it with your friends share it with fellow wrestling fans it almost sounds like a Dr. Seuss rhyme at this point, but as a team, as an extended family, we can continue to grow Boston Wrestling MWF where we can have these great talk shows seven nights a week. I truly believe that. A coronavirus has killed the nightlife, but do not fret, fans. Our eBay store is open for business 24-7 around the globe with great wrestling merchandise of superstars from every era. Every purchase helps us produce new studio shoot interviews for your enjoyment. Plus, you get an on-air shout-out as our Thanks to you, the link to the eBay store is in the description box below. Everyone that watches our programming is a friend. However, if you want to be part of the Boston Wrestling MWF family, it is simple. For less than an overpriced coffee down at Starbucks, head on over to patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. You get early ad-free access to our weekly Wrestling Insider in-studio shoot interviews, our world-renowned studio shoot interview DVD library that's been seen by millions online, millions more on The Howard Stern Show, Patreon exclusive videos like the Marty Jannetty WWF Super Tape 2 watch along coming this Thursday, along with a brand new full length Iron Sheik Studio Shoot interview DVD in April, plus the knowledge that you, yes, you, are helping keep wrestling legends working. Again, patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. The countdown is on to Wrestle House. We're in Tampa, Florida, WrestleMania week. We're going to have a home uh, with a variety of wrestling guests. They're going to be coming and going. Announcements continue to be made, including WWE Hall of Famer Jerry Briscoe, our longtime friend Al Snow, Dutch Mantel, a.k.a. Zeb Coulter, JTG of Crime Time, and more. It's going to be a blast having all these new superstars taping episodes with us. They're also going to do uh, live installments with cyber autograph signings, so you can not only uh, interact with them, but get an autograph photo made out to you and shipped to your home. Uh, continue to visit bostonwrestling.com for updates on that. On to the business in hand, folks, the unknown. I'm sure most of you by this point have heard about the apparent quote-unquote issues, and I use quotes because I still haven't communicated yet with the man, but uh, it appears, at least for the time being, we've hit the end of the road with our friend Tony Atlas. I was extremely angry uh, when after uh, having given Tony the opportunity for a couple of weeks to produce last week's episode for you guys, podcast style, he blew it off. Uh, and I was 
very blunt in saying so on the episode. As I've noted hundreds of times on these programs, without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling. Whether it be Tony Atlas or anyone else, there is no professional wrestler that is more important than you, the professional wrestling fan. Without your support, we do not exist. Uh, the day after that video, Tony's, again, quote-unquote, apparent Facebook page unleashed uh, a great work of fiction about myself, but as the week went on, others in wrestling told me that it was uh, a lot of BS coming from the guy that's running Tony's Facebook page. I can't say for sure if Tony dictated that post as it was noted, or if someone is trying to create friction. All I really can say is that Tony continues to ignore phone calls and texts, uh, which I find extremely disappointing. You regular fans of this show have heard Tony say uh, numerous times how I've gone above and beyond to try and help him financially uh, when he was broke at different times over the years. And, you know, it was almost embarrassing when he would say it, but I'm kind of glad he did at this point because I'm so agitated and angry and frustrated and stressed out by the situation. At least there's a lot of video evidence where he's either a pathological liar or there's a lot of evidence that Dan Marotti did a lot of good for Tony Atlas over the years. I'm just more than anything disappointed by what's going on. You know, I personally went above and beyond to try and help him. Uh, and for him to do this really hurts personally, not professionally. Uh, again, Wrestle House is coming up in Tampa WrestleMania week. Maybe we'll be auditioning a new co-host for our Tuesday night show uh, as we have a plethora of guests joining us for the first time. Uh, also, if you have not heard the news, we have a new podcast-style weekly program coming your way Monday nights at 7 before Raw with Oscar from Men on a Mission as a lead in Raw, another superstar of the mid-'90s WWF to provide unique insight on our industry, I should say. Uh, since Tony won't speak to me, uh, after years of extending friendship to him, I can only go with the theory that if Tony does return to Wrestling Insiders, it won't be anytime soon. Uh, so wrestling fans around the corner around the world, uh, again, we welcome you to a brand new installment of Wrestling Insiders at your house. I searched high, I searched low for some original content with Tony that got lost in the archives and came across uh, some unused footage with a lengthy Black History Month episode we did a couple of years back. Uh, in never-be-seen and never-before-seen footage. See, I can't even talk. I'm so upset about what's going on with Tony. Uh, Tony shoots from the hip on his friend, the late, great WWE Hall of Famer, the Junkyard Dog, Mr. Fuji drugging wrestlers, and Vince McMahon singling him out because he was black. Maybe for the last time, here is Tony Atlas. The Patriot is the easiest team in the MFL to be. How is that? They got one weapon. You shut that one weapon down, they done. See, the Patriots never developed a running game. Mm. See, what people don't realize about what, with the running game, if you want to keep people off of uh, Tom Brady, you have a running game. What that, what these runners do, anybody that play football, they wear out the Lambers. So they can't blitz. They wear you out. Them yeah. Lambas are 300 pounds. They don't have a lot of wind. So if you keep running, they keep running into them, out the wild, they get tired. That's what, what was the team they played last week? I mean, week before that, they killed, they killed them. Who was it? The Titan. They had this guy, six foot four, 250 pounds, that pound the hell out of the Patriots. The last test down that guy made, you, you watch the Patriots. They didn't even want to talk to this man no more. They did this when he went by. One guy did <laughs> You know how they died and tried to attack it? They, 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 because he ran hard, and they got tired. They kept running and kept running and kept running, and they kept blitz, blitzing Brady, and the land broke down. Brady is only as good as his protection. You, that land break down? You know, and then they didn't have Gronkowski out there, somebody right. big, yep. you know, to catch them high balls and all this stuff. That the, the only hell was with, with Element. I think uh, uh, Hogan got knocked out of the game early, right? Hogan got hurt. Yeah. So, see, that's why people always get Drew Bledsoe. Bledsoe was a hell of a quarterback. He, was he only had good. one person that he could go to, Ben Coach. Yeah. I mean, with Ben Coates wasn't out there, he had nobody to catch the ball. I didn't realize you were that big of a Patriots fan, Tom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I watched it. Who's your favorite Patriot? 
right now? Yeah. Gronkowski. You like Gronk? Well, he's a team. He's the only one that Brady could go to no matter what. He pulled Brady out of so many freaking spots. And you see what happened when the couch is not there? Right. You, you think he'll go into wrestling at all? Huh? You think he'll go into wrestling? Yep. He's been poking uh, around into it. That's I think, too bad I, no, think, I, think I, 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 I think he could go into wrestling if he could get out of the football after this year. Healthy. Somewhat healthy. Right? All right. So, so we still rolling, buddy? Yeah. He's going he, he, he gonna to be in a, he gonna be a paralegion if he keep playing. Yeah, he's, he's pretty He take up. a hell of a beating for the Patriots. I mean, he's the most uh, dedicated guy out there. But see, the Patriots never uh, kept a good running game. Never, they, they put everything on Brady. So you shut Brady down. Is that right, brother? When Brady is not out there, you're a football fan, right? When Brady is not out there, what is the Patriot? See? All right, Tony. You ready, brother? They put every what what yeah, I read, but but it's an old saying that they used to say about wrestling. They used to build a territory around one wrestler. Vince stopped doing that. That's what the Patriots need to do. All right. They put everything around one person. And you go to get that one person down, you ain't gotta worry about the rest. They only got one person to worry about on the team. Brady, that's it. All right. Just don't give him time. All right. If you don't give Brady time, you beat the Patriots every day. All right. But if he got time, then he forget eat about your it. lunch. Yeah. All right. All right, Tony. Five, four, yeah. three. Russell fans, welcome back. If you only could have been in studio for this time out, Tony was sharing some of his thoughts. And my runny nose. And his runny nose and his runny mouth. But that's a different that's story for a different, different story. time. Tony, we've talked about three great uh, African-American Hall of Famers that you've known throughout your time. One more before we hit the road this month. Junkyard Dog, man that was a peer of yours in WWF, a fellow Hall of Famer much like yourself, a man that caused the New Orleans wrestling scene to explode in the early 80s when he was working with Bill Watts and the Booker, uh, the Big Cat Ernie Ladd. Junkyard Dog was a wonderful person. His life was cut short too soon. I, I felt his, his life was cut so, short uh, too soon. He... Uh, he put a new look to uh, wrestle. Most wrestlers had to have a certain image to call themselves. They have what they call good guys and bad guys. Now, Dog came out looking like a bad guy, but was a good guy. Yeah. He wrestled like a bad guy, uh, but, you know, he, he got cheered. Come out with a big dog collar around his neck with the chain and howling at the moon, you know. Uh, so... It, it was unusual to see a guy that pos, uh, project a bad image but got positive response from it. And he was, I ain't going to say he was not a good wrestler, but he was not a wrestler. He wasn't technically sound. He was not technically, he was not like a Bob Orton or a Terry Funk or anything like he that. Was he was charisma more, and he was more, more, more of a showman. Yeah. Uh, 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 a wrestler. Now, when you talk about black wrestling, you got to get there like Skip Young. Dory Dixon was the best I've ever seen in my life. Dory Dixon? Dory Dixon. Never was heard of Dory. Absolute, he wrestled like Ray Mysterio. Did he? Yeah, he was, he was absolutely. Dory Dixon? Dory Dixon was, anybody can tell you, was, he was amazing. Well, you tell us about Dory Dixon. I Dory have no Dixon, idea who he you're did talking moves. About. A lot of these moves you see guys do now, Dory Dixon did them years ago. But who is he? He, he never. What, what territory would he be best known from? He wrestled a lot around Texas, Texas. And, and Mexico and overseas a lot. Mm -hmm. Wrestled a lot in Europe. See, a lot of guys did not make it in the territory. The reason for in the WWF, they had room for maybe two black wrestlers. One on top, one on the bottom. NWA, one black wrestler. One on top, one on the bottom. So you have a lot of wrestlers that, if, like, let's say, for example, if Rufus R. Freight Train Jones is in Charlotte, then no black guy could go there. Rocky Johnson called Vince a lot to come into the WWF years ago. Vince told him every time, Vince Senior now, not Junior. He said, I got Tony Atlas and I got SD. If one of them should leave, then I would give you a spot here. 
I left. That's how Rocket came in. When you but if I had double left, Rocket would have never went WWF. Really? That's how it was. If they had one Japanese, they would not bring another one. Two at the most of every uh, minority, you know. That's why you only saw Fuji. Think about all, like I say, thousands of Indians. We're not going to get going on that again. Uh, but I want to know I mean, who these you talk about thousands of Native it, Americans it, are well, that how many you Strongbow saw, held back. Think about it. In the, in, back in the 70s and the 80s, how many you saw in the WWF? I'm not saying there One. were a lot of them. What I'm saying is, is that I don't think there are dozens of Native American wrestlers, never mind thousands. Oh, no, there were thousands because they had the territories all over the country back then. And you're trying to tell me there were thousands of Indian wrestlers, wrestlers yeah. all over the country. Yeah, yeah. In 30 territories. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You lived the life. Yeah. But see, a lot of them, what y'all don't realize, a lot of them, they couldn't make it here like George Wells. They would go to Canada. You had Stan P. You just didn't have America. A lot of them went to Mexico. A lot of them went in out of Japan. These Indians like, had like, to leave like the Abdul country. the Butcher. When you look at the territory, Abdul the Butcher worked. He worked one. Right. Here. Georgia, that was it. Yeah. He never worked for Vince. He never worked for Vern Gagne. But he's popular. He did most of his work in Japan. See? So you had a lot of Native American and blacks and other minorities that could not get work here. So they went to other places. Yes, I would say thousands. Yeah, yeah. So thousands they went black. of Native Over American years, wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. During the period that, that he was there, thousands that probably had went and didn't get a break because Chief would not let them in. Tatanka was lucky. Tatanka, one of the best Indian wrestlers I've ever seen in my life was Wahoo McDaniel. And he was a real Indian. He was a real Indian, but he was the roughest, toughest, best. Him and Ric Flair, they set the, the, the territory on fire. He was on the cover of magazines and everything. Never went to WWF. Why? Chief J. Strongbow. Chief J. Strongbow. Well, he, there were so many similarities between the two's character at that point. No. That kind of, they, no, they were both Indians. That's they the problem. They both wore the big headdress. No, that was the problem. They were both Indians. See, you well, right. They're no, both Indian. I understand that. Yeah. But it's not like he was a wrestler coming in as Ed McDaniel that didn't have the you similar didn't see look. his match. What do you mean? If you saw a Wahoo wrestler, you would never look at Chief again. Oh, you can't even Are compare you kidding the two. Me? Chief J. Strongbow is as light as one of the feathers that he had on his head. Yeah, but when you saw Wahoo McDaniel was, I mean, when you saw his match and him and Ric Flair and Johnny Valentine. You believe. My God, what matches them, them guys had. And why they never pick him up, I don't know. You believed when you watched them. Well, you have to yeah. say that the McMahons were loyal to Chief J. Yeah. Well, no, Chief would do things to, to destroy them. It wasn't that they was loyal to Chief J. They would do things... Wrestlers back there knew how to cut your throat before you even got through the door. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, give me an example. <laughs> like, for example, if they hear that Dan Morello is coming and you're Italian, and the top guy, the top Italian wrestler in that territory, he would even make up stuff to go tell the promoter. Really? Yeah, to keep him from bringing you in. They, they do anything, and then once you're there, they do stuff to make sure that you get fired. Just like you ask them for like for direction. They say, how would I get to the Boston Coliseum? They would give you direction to Worcester. Wrong. Yeah, oh, I get you. I get now you. you're late. Yeah. Because you went to the wrong building. Well, it's you know, they had all type of ways of doing it. Fuji would drug you. He, he drug you? Yeah, he drug your ass. So we're, he would get cookies. And he'd put drugs in the cookies? LSD. Really? LSD and cookies. Every wrestler knew this. That other brand of food. Can you remember anyone that he ever got with these LSD He did it to Ron cookies. Shaw. He did it to Uncle Elmer. He did it to JYD. He gave him the LSD-filled cookies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how did JYD react to them? He was crawling around the floor barking. Really? Yeah, on the hands and knees, on the floor. We, take him, we took him to the, uh, 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 to the hotel... And dog got down his head and knees and started crawling around the uh, crawling around it in the lobby on his hands and knees. You know we're getting signals, Tony, but they, they always fail to remember that I cannot see. Yeah, yeah, he did a lot of stuff. I see. It. Does that look like a two, a three? Yeah, three, two, two, zero. 
All right, sounds good. All right, Tony, unbelievable. I don't even know who that is. Is that the puppet? I don't. I. Yeah, food, you get your LSD, man. All right, well, you know what, Tony? I feel like I'm ready to crawl around on the floor and bark like a dog. But Jake, Junkyard Dog, his, he, he had some pretty serious drug problems. Well, <clears throat> Cosro Vizieri said Nighthot and JYD were the only two that could hang with him. Uh, I wouldn't say it was any worse than anybody else. It, it was that... Uh, He was not in a position to do what they do. What do you mean? I've been in room with dog, and I had a, a motto. No matter what, 12 o'clock, I go to sleep. That was my motto. I don't care if it's six women's in the room. I don't care if it's drugs in the room. I go, Tam, the day was over to me. At 11.30, no matter where I'm at, I started heading towards my room. I do it right now today. I start heading towards my room. Because I had to get up in the morning. I had to be in the gym at 7 every morning. Because I knew my money was in my physique. Exactly. If I lost my physique, I can't party no more. So I would always leave the room. I would see guys set up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Then the next morning, I'd go banging on the door trying to wake them up. I seen it a thousand and one times. Did that happen with JYD? Yep, but he wasn't the only one that was in the room that they had to get up. But he was the only one that got punished for it. Now, how did JYD get punished? Well, they 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 start promoting him and start doing things for him. You would you could see it in the way they, the, the, as far the, as how he was born. Uh, right, right. Well, they they it, you you get on they take you they had like a a, a a A team and a B team. B team and even a C uh, team. Right, yeah. right. And then all of a sudden he's wrestling and uh, you know he 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 normally would be in, in at the Boston Garden. Now he's in Fitzboro. Right. Yeah. Instead of Boston. Uh, but is it fair to say that Junkyard Dog? <laughs> God bless you, sir. Yeah, but the guy that brought him the dope, Adrian Donner, Jesse Ventura, that sat in there did as much as he did, they in the garden. Well, JYD was in terrible condition. Well, they were too. Adrian was horrible. Adrian could still go. Dog could too. But no. The oh, last yeah. couple of years Junkyard Dog was in WWF, you think he was mobile? I don't. Well, see, they He was a shell of himself. Well, see... What I'm, the way I, I look at it, they could have done something to help him. They could have sent him to rehab, maybe. They didn't want to. See, you was on your own. They see? wanted him on the road. Well, yeah, but they, they did things for these other guys. I seen them do it. Yeah, they, well, they I know did. Jake they sent in 87. Yeah, because Curry Von Erk used to come in. They used to take Curry Von Erk and throw him in the shower. And this is during his WWF yeah, run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sober him up so he go in the ring. Yeah, throw him in the shower. Dog come in, Stone, they talk about him. We saw how different they treat him, you know, because he couldn't do what they do. He didn't realize that. Thunderbolt Palliser told me, and I don't mean to sound racist, he told me one day I came in drunk <coughs> and stoned with Tommy Wildfire Rick, who's a very, very good friend of mine. And Thunderbolt Palliser put him over the side. We were late for the show. And he said, Tony, you can't do what them white wrestlers do and keep a job. He told me that. So 10 years, about 20 years later, I saw Thunderbolt at Wrestle Cage down in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I told him what he told me. He, he looked at me and said, well, did I lie? Vince McMahon came to me, Jimmy Slooker, Ronnie Piper, and all of us guys. And we was missing shows. John, Greg Valentine. We, we missed the show. Yeah, he was pissed. He didn't say nothing to uh, 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 Greg Valentine. Didn't say nothing to Hunger Talk Man. Didn't say nothing to Slooker. Came straight to me. He said, I need to make an example out of you. But he didn't say nothing to Slooker. Well, can I play devil's advocate with you for a second? Do you think that maybe you were the one that was singled out where you had a history in the past of missing shows? No. No. We all was doing it. Well, but I mean, you had a reputation. I mean, you no, lost I out on... No, I did not. No, I don't know you where you had You didn't have a reputation. Nope, nope. You nope, vanished nope, from the company nope. for eight months, nope, and you didn't have a reputation. Nope, but that's one company. 
That that is one that 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 is one company. I understand that, but you, you were not the most reliable at that point. You also I, missed I, out on the chance I, to win I, the tag team titles with S. D. Jones in Philadelphia because walked, you vanished. I walked out on them and I came back. Right. But a lot of other guys did too, and came back and made money. Hogan left them, came back, made money. Slipper left, came back, made money. Slaughter left them and tried to sue them, came back and made money. The Slaughter situation was an interesting one. Yeah, about the G.I. Joe thing. Not only did he leave, he wanted to try and unionize the boys. Exactly. And came back and made money. He came back and made a lot of money, yep. Yeah. Well, you did get to go back. You did. <laughs> but Maybe not to make money. Not in that position. Not to make not money. Not in a top main event not position. Not to make money. See, he would bring you back, but he'd bring you back in a lower spot. Right. He brought me back to jar me out. He did. For that, he could have left me alone. You, he didn't bring Slugger back and job, and job him out. Oh, he did. No. Come on, get the sneeze. <laughs> there I know. was there. I, I, I was there when the girl got killed and everything else and all the money was paid off and all this and that right, stuff. But, yeah, are you talking about when he brought Jimmy back right, in 89? Right, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. From 89 to 92, Jimmy, other than Hockey Talk, man, there wasn't any program. Yeah, he but he didn't lose his job over, over a death. Hogan got busted with uh, busted with, uh, 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 with a gun, steroids, and everything else. Still kept his job. I could go on and on and on and on. Ronnie Piper got the beat up of the stewards on the airplane. Kept his job. I could go. I see, brother. I, I, I've seen it. I'm not denying it. I just try and look at it from every angle because it interests me. But but he told me himself, I need to make an example. Out of you. Well, you seem, and I don't know, you're not exactly saying this, but you make it, to me, feel like he singled you out because you were black. Yes. My Thunder point Bo is... Thunderbolt Patterson told me that. Like I said, I d do not know of any widespread stories of Piper missing shots when he was on top, but in your instance, you even said before, they could not trust you for a period of time because well, yeah. you vanished. Well, I'll admit to my wrong doing. Okay. I walked out on right. But when I added up, Everything I did, come out maybe three or four shows. Outside of when you yeah, left. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I never took him to court. No. <laughs> he was in court for people. Hacksaw Jim Duggan and the sheet got busted with cocaine on the highway. Did it hurt Hacksaw in it? Yes, it did. No, he didn't. He was gone he for how long? He stayed there. Well, he was gone for how long when he it happened? He stayed there. He never left. He yes, was he still did. on the payroll. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. He was gone. Ask him. For half a year, Sheik I, was gone for over a year. I came back and made money. He made a lot of money. That's what I'm saying. At the same time, he didn't get busted with the cult. But, but you see, you're not listening to yourself talk. All of them came back and made money. Tony Atlas didn't come back and make money. That's the point you keep missing. They all came back and made money. And they gone, and they sent away with a short stock on the way. And trust me. They got paid during the time they was off. All right, let me throw this one at you, Tony, since we're kind of on a roll right now. We just did an episode back on Royal Rumble weekend in January. But to heal myself, to yeah. heal All myself, right. I only look at my participation. Right. I figured if I had missed them three or four shows, I would have been okay. I didn't realize it was that few. Uh, yeah, ask Tito. Yes, it is. I know you missed the night you were supposed to get the tag titles, and I know you vanished from the company for eight months. I thought you were missing shows more regularly than that. No. So you've corrected me. Yeah. When, do you think, and again, we, we did a whole episode on 1990 into 91 when you came back as Samba Simba. Do you think their original intent was to bring you in and turn you into a jobber? Or do you think that maybe they thought this Samba Simba idea was something they could invest money in and turn into a, a player on the roster? Do you think I Samba was Simba was set okay. up to fail? Yes. From day one? Day one. Really? Why is that? You see, this is what happened. All right. I I was working for Mario Savoda. Right. Uh, ICW. Well, Tony Rummel called Kevin Sullivan. He wasn't a booker then. He was working down there. Kevin Sullivan talked to Ole Anderson. Ole Anderson was my trainer, one of my trainers. <clears throat> Ole said, I got this great idea, and I know you can get the job done. He said, I want you to grow out your beard, grow your hair out. He said, we're going to dye solid white. Dye your beard solid white. And you're going to be sitting in the audience in a suit. That's what Ole would tell me. 
Rick Flair going to come out and talk about there's no good black wrestlers left. You know, oh, can you imagine went, how that would get over today? Well, yeah, but that's, that time yeah, it was this is okay. 89. It yep, was 90. okay there. So he's going to insult all the black wrestlers. So he said, I, look at this old man here. I could whoop this old man. So I'm supposed to act like I'm a whole fever and everything. And I'm supposed to get in the ring. Flair's supposed to jump on me for a little bit. Go to throw me into the rope. I reverse it, throw him in the rope. Pick him up for the press slam. Slam him. Rip my coat off where people could see the body. And I'm supposed to work angle with, uh, uh, with Flair. Only it. Don't call me and talk to him about it. So I told Mario that I got a chance of going to WCW. Mario called Vince. Said, Vince, you know Tony going to WCW. Vince said, get him to the office. Vince called me. Mario Savoti drove me from Maine to uh, Stanford. Yeah, well, yeah. I went off and talked to Vince. Vince sat me up that day. I called Ole, I told Ole that Vince, that I'm going back with Vince. Ole said, you're making a mistake of your life. Ole Adams told me, he said, you're making a mistake of your life. He said, we got it all set up for you. I supposed to have left the same time as Cactus Jack, because he was with Mario too. So me and Cactus Jack were supposed to go together. I took my plane ticket, you could ask him, I gave my plane ticket to WCW to Rick Fuller. To Rick Fuller, really? Rick Fuller went down and took my place. I gave it, when they kept calling for me, I gave it to Rick Fuller. Rick Fuller went down. Now, the first show, a buddy man taped it. My first match is Saba Simba. I'm cutting through the aisle. Ronnie Piper said, that ain't no Saba Simba. That's Tony Atlas. He put me in the Royal Rumble. First, last one in, I was in the Royal Rumble for what? 30 seconds? Short period of time. And that, I believe, was your last night during that run. Do you know how much they were going to offer you in WCW to go I, in? I didn't rest in WrestleMania. You were gone before that. Yeah, 175000 a year. From WCW. And what did you wind up getting from WWE? A hundred. You'd wind up making a hundred, or that's what you were going to get? That, that was the offer. They wanted to give me a hundred grand a year, WCW 175. So why did you the wind Aaron up? The Aaron Sheik went down from 260, wrestled one show, and still got paid. But he, he, that well, whole that year. was an administrative error. I remember no, that. No, they, all the guys were doing it. was a lot of guys went down, and they, and they got paid. We were there, it wasn't working. On and off, all these guys. They couldn't perform anymore. Well, what happened with Sheik was he was so bad, they yeah. just didn't want to use him. Yeah. Then because it was out of sight, out of mind, they didn't realize that his contract was set to roll and over. He still got so it rolled over again for another year. Yeah, that is true. But yeah. well, let me ask you this before we go, Tony. I hear the music playing in the background. Were you on the tour? I think it was on Australia when the Sheik and Junkyard Dog shared a bag of popcorn that had the crack rocks in the bottom of it? No, I don't know. I heard, that. <laughs> I heard that was quite the, the plane ride. No, I don't remember that one. You don't remember that one? Well, no. any final thoughts about JYD before we go? Uh, he, he, I wish he had lived longer. You know, it's, it's kind of a shame that, that he died at such a young age. I still thought, even though with his problem, that uh, because towards the end, he was pretty much straightening it out. He, he died in life. a car accident. He had yeah, nothing to do with yeah, drugs, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, had nothing to do with drugs. He went to see his daughter uh, graduate. graduate. Went to his daughter graduate, and he had to make a show the next day. Instead of staying over and leaving early in the morning, he decided to drive that night. Yeah. Real shame. Real shame. I, <laughs> God cost him bless, his life. Tony. It co cost him his life, yeah. Well, all right, wrestling fans, another very memorable edition of Memories and Legends. We're going to be back next month as the road to WrestleMania 35 continues. We're going to look back at the 2006 <laughs> WWE Hall of Fame ceremony when Tony Atlas, amongst other great legends, were inducted in Chicago, Illinois. It's going to be a lot of fun. Like all of our episodes on Memories and Legends are, as Tony tries to throw his filthy Kleenex at me. Filthy, I'm a Filthy Kleenex at me. Filthy Kleenex. 
Those Kleenex could go legs and run away. You've been blowing into them for so long. I need a hit, brother. You need to put a land out there, brother. I know right. you got some of that land. Lay, lay some out on the table, man. All right, so well, we can celebrate the new year. I feel like the Sheik's back. All right, for the <laughs> Hall of Fame at Tony Atlas, I'm Dan Marotti. Until we speak again, folks, you and yours, be well. These halls got definitely on the table. The World Wrestling Federation was live at Wallen Pupak Area High School in Holly, Pennsylvania, Friday, March the 30th, 1984. In the opening contest, Invader number two beat Pete Sanchez, who replaced Rene Goulet. B. Brian Blair with the win over Ron Shaw, who replaced Israel Matia. Invader number one drew Tiger Chung Lee. Tony Gurria, who replaced Tony Atlas and WWF Tag Team Champion Rocky Johnson, defeated the Wild Samoans. And in the main event, Rocky Johnson, who replaced Ivan Putski, with the win over Greg the Hammer Valentine. If you were in Holly Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to help keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our acclaimed Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders, Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021.